Hey guys, Seth here with Seth David Films, and this is my second video of my 2022 gear. The first video was just about bags, so if you want to take a look at that, you can check out that and fix the link above and below. Um, but today, I'm talking about what everybody talks about all the time, which is which cameras and lenses do I bring to the wedding day? My journey started with Sony mirrorless. I used to shoot film cameras for fun and I used to have, I think I had a Nikon D40, that was my first DSLR, loved it. But when it actually came to filming, when I got introduced, I was introduced with the Sony A6000. And that was my introduction to mirrorless and it changed everything. When I started shooting weddings professionally, the first camera I had was the A7 III. And this camera was so versatile, so all around, and it still to this day is a great camera for weddings. But that is not the main cameras we use anymore. We still have a couple kind of as backups, but we use what basically most Sony shooters use, and that's these three cameras. And the camera that started it all is this guy, the A7S III. When you could shoot 4K at 60 frames per second with stabilization and with better color than my A7 III's, it just changed the game. This particular camera has been probably the most worked camera in my collection um, because it is so versatile. It's with its low light capabilities and its uh, durability, it has been our go-to camera of the last two years or I guess a year and a half. How long has this camera been out? I don't even know anymore. But since we got this, we started to phase out our A7 III's. And we first thing I started was with the FX3, which is basically the A7S III, um, but with more cinema features. Now, I'll be honest, I bought this as a gimbal camera, which is a very expensive gim gimbal camera, and realized it's power laid in its ability to um, shoot commercial work. So this has been my A camera for all my commercial work and my B or C camera for wedding days. It's basically the A7S III, but with some cool features like a tally light. I can plug XLRs into the handle and I can rig this camera out like a legit cinema camera fairly easily. And it's been a great color matcher to the A7S III. But recently the A7 IV came out and this is a great all around. It replaces the A7 III in the fact that it can shoot video and match the color profiles as my two video cameras and photos at a high res rate that I can do photo shoots with this and feel more than competent. So this has been my all around camera for, for shoots where I have to blend photography and video. And more importantly, it matches these guys on wedding days when I'm shooting video. So. One of us will have the A7 IV all day and one of us will have the A7S III all day. And those are kind of the main two cameras. So that probably surprised nobody. The next thing we want to talk about is lenses. And I, I know people love primes and I get it. Primes are sexy, primes are cool, but I still go back to your classic 24 to 70 2.8. And I have two versions of it. I have the Sigma, which we have on the A7S III almost all day, and I have the Tamron version, which is actually a 28 to 75 2.8, because it's so light. This guy is usually on my gimbal camera, which is now the A7IV sometimes. These guys just get you out of trouble. They, they're so versatile. With the crop factor, when you can do a crop lens on the A7IV, it can and shoot up as much as like an 85 or 90. Um, and it's just the best. And that's, that's what everyone uses for so many projects. So if you had to get one camera and one lens for wedding videography, I would get the A7S III with a 24-70-2.8. And that gets you through most of the problems during the day. But you see I have a few more lenses here and let's kind of talk about them. And I'm gonna go in order of use because frankly, some of these lenses we don't use that often, if almost ever. But let's start about in order of use. So I'm gonna do a little switcheroo here. Okay, camera magic. 
<laughs> so I use these lenses. Mostly these ones, sometimes these ones, but they're what I have found to be useful, beautiful, and can't handle me beating the tar out of them. And I'll, I'll put them in three different categories. The first one is the, tr the holy trinity of zooms, your 2470, your 17 to 24, and your 70 to 200, more or less. These ones are actually, because it's Tamron, this is a 28 to 75, this is a 17 to 28, and then we get the Sony F4. Now the big surprise in this is that I don't have a 28 7200, and this was done on purpose. First it was done because it was the cheaper lens, but as I worked with the F2.8 Sony Mark I, it was so heavy. This guy is so light, and at telephoto, you're already getting plenty of bokeh in the background from the compression, so I felt like the return for the price, the weight, and the quality was totally worth it rather than getting the larger F2.8. Now there's a new one coming out from these guys that I should try, but we'll get to that later. The next section I'm gonna go for is the primes, and I have a 85, a 90, and a 50. The 50 and the 85 probably don't surprise anybody. They're only F1.8 rather than 1.4, or that crazy new F1.2, which I hear is a dope lens, but it's huge and heavy. But these guys are small and gorgeous picture specifically this 85. I have been so impressed with this. When I, I've used the baddest 1.8 and I've used the, some of the other 1.4s, but I just can't believe how good a picture that this very affordable Sony F 1.4 85 looks. The other lens that I use that's a prime is a macro lens, and this lens is kind of got its own <laughs> story. Uh, it's very infamous for the, the cool portraits you can get and its ability to shoot incredible macro shots. So it's very versatile. I'll be honest though, I don't use it as much as the 85, probably because of weight. And it's just not as easy to put on and off like that one does. Often I'll switch out this for an 85 if the low light is too much for my F4. The final group of lenses is the crazy ones. And we're gonna start off with the lens I've used the most, which is actually this guy right here. This is a film lens. Actually, this is uh, a special lens to me. Um, it comes from a woman I used to work with in Tibet. And she's since passed away, but she shot film, she shot photos all over the Tibetan countryside. And this was a lens off of her film camera. And I used this for my first year, and every once in a while I'll pull it out. But it's just a classic, 50 1.4 lens, and so before I could buy any of these, I was using this for low light, and it's got some gorgeous pictures, fun artifacts because if it's a vintage lens, and um, yeah, I love it for the dance floor and some other things, but this this cool old vintage lens, I, I encourage all young filmmakers to start with it. They're affordable, they fit on any of the mirrorless camera systems, and for me this one's really special. The other two uh, are pretty crazy. This one's fun. This is, this is the Helios made in the USSR. Um, very fun lens. And then this one is the new anamorphic by Saru. Um, and it's a 50 millimeter 2.9 anamorphic. So it squeezes, it takes a frame this big and squeezes it onto the sensor to get that cinematic look. Very impractical, but a very cool picture. So this is the order of probably what I use lenses and how often I use them. Starting with a 24 to 70, going all the way down to, <laughs> actually this guy should be down here. That's more like it. Perfect. Those are the lenses I use. Will they change? Probably, but the, I've been really happy with these for the last two to three years. Next up, let's talk about what everyone likes to talk about the cameras in the sky. And the last cameras I wanna talk about is drones. I have a couple now. I started with, uh, I usually just had one at a time, but <laughs> I lost this one in a move. We moved houses and it got packed away somewhere and I had a wedding the next weekend, so I bought this guy. This is the Mavic 2 Pro. It does amazing footage, it's built like a tank and it folds up in an amazingly small package. This is the DJI Air 2S, Air S2. Which one is it? Air 2S. Amazing footage as well. And it has some killer settings that gives you some cool time lapses. And yeah, they're drones. They're great. You should probably have one. Get your license. 
In conclusion, really, there's so many good cameras out there. It doesn't matter anymore. Um, lenses are usually more important than the cameras because of just how the technologies of cameras have come so far. Um, drones, get the cheapest drone available. It doesn't, it, it honestly doesn't matter most of the time because it gives you that quick one or two seconds of changing perspectives. All these are our tools. Uh, they get you the story you want to tell. I'm grateful I've been able to try out so many different options, but most of all, I'm more grateful that I get to tell stories. So there you have it. These are the cameras and the lenses I use on my wedding days. Hope that helps. Good luck with it out there. Tell the stories. Don't worry about the gear, but just tell your stories. But here's my gear. I know. A little bit back and forth there. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope to see you guys again sometime soon.